Welcome to this class on business strategy. It will focus on goals and objectives. The goals are the long-term targets of the business and the objectives, well, these are quantified and time-based to achieve the desired goal. So we have the broad long-term targets, the goals, and the objectives, which are more specific. Now, the first task is to convert the strategic vision and mission of the business into specific performance targets. These set out the, the final outcome the company intends to achieve. The specific performance targets are important because this show what the, the, the company is aiming at, the, the final outcome the company intends to achieve. And also they help the company to be innovative and motivated in achieving the results. The business needs to know what it's aiming at. It needs to know where it's going if it's going to be motivated and also if it's going to look for the best way of achieving the results. So it needs direction and the specific performance targets gives it that direction. The targets also help to plan out a strategic path. Sometimes when aiming at something into the future, at, at aiming at an objective in the future, there are several ways to achieve it. Well, it's a question of optimizing, a question of picking the best pathway to achieve it. There may be several ways it can be done, but pick the best one. So the, the first task is to convert the strategic vision into this specific performance target or targets. The objectives show what the company wants to achieve. The objectives can be considered at two levels, corporate and functional. Corporate being the overall objectives of the business and the functional being the much more applied internal functioning of the business. So we could have objectives relating to the marketing section of the business or to the production side of the business or one of the functional areas. So the objectives show what the company wants to achieve and secondly it can be done at two levels. The corporate level for a start, well these objectives concern the business as a whole. That's what we mean by corporate level. It, it concerns all of the business. Such an example might include setting a target profit level for a given financial year. That applies to the whole business. Every part of the business will be involved in trying to bring in that profit level target. Or it could be setting um, a target return on investment. Again, all of the business will be involved. All of the various functions of the business will try to contribute towards achieving that target return on investment. So the corporate level applies to the whole business. The functional level, well, specific objectives, let's say, for marketing purposes. For example, uh, examples of functional marketing uh, objectives may include increasing sales by 20% in the next financial year. That's a functional level target it's telling the marketing department that sales must increase by 20% in the next financial year. Or it may look at how to respond to customer complaints and say that a response must, must take place within let's say two working days. So it's functional level, it's down to how the business functions and looking at individual parts of the business and setting targets for the individual parts of the business. Now both the corporate and the functional level targets should meet what's known as the SMART criteria. And what SMART means, it, it's an anagram, we'll start at the, I'll put the cursor onto the screen, it starts up here with the specific. The objectives should be specific. They should be clear. They should 
not be vague and, and generalized. It should be very specific so everyone knows what is being aimed at. It's clear what people, uh, people's perceptions will be clear about what is required. Uh, if they're generalized, if they're not very clear, people will not commi commit to it. The management, the workers, they won't be committed to achieving something vague. But they will be committed, perhaps, to achieving something specific. It's a clear objective. That's the S in SMART. M in SMART, well, measurable. It's important that the outcomes are measurable. Otherwise, no one will know if they've been achieved or not. We can only say something's been achieved if we knew what was required and whether what was done matched what was required. It has to be measurable. That's the M. A for achievable. Um, if, t if the objectives are not achievable, no one's going to try. Uh, it's like jumping up and trying to touch the moon. It's not achievable, so people do not do it. Uh, the the target, the objective, must be achievable. It must be capable of being done. Otherwise, it will never. Uh, no one will ever try to achieve it. It must be relevant. The the workforce must see the objective as relevant, relevant to them, relevant to the department, relevant to the business. So the achievement must be relevant to the business. If it's not relevant to the business, if it's relevant to some external objective, then again if the, the, the workforce will not be motivated, they will not care, they will not want to participate in that. And it must be time bound. In other, in other words, it must have some completion date. It must say, look, sales must increase by 20% in the next year. Time bound. To say sales must increase by 20% doesn't seem to suggest a lot. Is that an immediate requirement or is that something that could be achieved over the next 10 years? Some time dimension must be included in looking at these um, objectives. Now setting a goal, well examples of strategic goals uh, to enter selected overseas markets, that may be a goal. Or to achieve, um, to acquire I should say, a competitor company. To, to buy out a competitor or to merge. Or to innovate the product line change the product line uh, so as to create a barrier to entry so that other companies find it difficult to copy it so it has uniqueness in the marketplace or to innovate the product line by reducing costs or, or it could be to enhance the company's reputation by promoting an environmentally friendly agenda perhaps uh, other companies will find it difficult to compete with them if they if they have developed a reputation for being environmentally friendly and customers and the, the wider community know the company as a company that cares about the environment and that would give it an advantage perhaps in the marketplace um, a strategic goal could be to foster good relationships with the local community. So there are various strategic goals that could be followed. Now let's turn to uh, a slightly more obscure piece of terminology, that of strategic architecture. Let's just take the first point here. Strategic architecture may be seen as a road map for future development. It develops management, it, sorry, it helps management to decide which core competencies to build and determine what technologies are required. Okay, so strategic architecture 
it's seen as a roadmap for future development. It's it's looking at where the company wants to be, where it is and where it wants to be, and looking at how to get there. And this helps the, the management to decide which core competencies, which special talents, which special skills, which special pieces of equipment, or which special um, advantages can the business create to determine what is required, what is required in terms of getting to the overall objective. So the strategic architecture is like um, a plan for future development. It communicates with customers and other external constituents and indicates the company's plans. So that's point two. It, it communicates with customers and other external constituents and indicates the company's plans. So the architecture, the strategic architecture, is this broad view of where the business is and where it wants to be and how to get there and it communicates that to the relevant stakeholders. Now the issues to consider when developing a strategic architecture. First of all, the relationship between competitiveness and the competency of the, the business. What's the relationship between competitiveness and the, if you like, the core competencies? Um, people may have special talents and maybe specialist machines in the business but perhaps they're not being used effectively and therefore they are not contributing towards the overall competitiveness of the business. It's a question of harnessing the core competencies and channeling them in a way that helps them to become uh, more effective in delivering competitiveness. So, what is the relationship? The importance of the core competency in providing customer benefits. Now the customer benefits could be in better quality product or a cheaper product or both. So, the architecture, the strategic architecture needs to be able to join up the customer benefits with the core competencies with these special talents or skills or abilities or specialist machinery or specialized techniques looking at what the company can do best what gives it uh, an advantage in the market looking at those and joining it up with the customer benefit and then we have the relationship between future business opportunities and core competency looking at where the business wants to be, where it is now, where it wants to be, which as I said earlier is this overall strategic planning idea. Now trying to work out the relationship between what business opportunities lie out there in the future and what are the current core competencies of the business and how can they be further tweaked to meet the future requirements of the business. A lot of this of course is looking into the future and the future is notoriously difficult to predict. So even investing in core competencies today which it is imagined will be useful in the future, well the future may not work out that way. The future may require different core competencies in which case the investment today would have been a waste of time and effort and money. Nonetheless, what we've got now is a picture of the goals, objectives and a little bit about the strategic architecture of the business. Now let's turn our attention to this other point of control. Now strategic control, well uh, strategic control focuses on the dual questions of whether, first of all, the strategy is being implemented as planned and 
the results produced by the strategy are those intended. Now, first of all, is the strategy being implemented as planned? Having got a, a strategy, it's important that it is implemented as it is planned out. Otherwise, uh, <coughs> the implementation may be, first of all, inefficient, but also, secondly, may not be precisely what was intended. And the strategic intent is important because that's what was intended at the outset. And we'll talk about very, very briefly at the end about strategic intent. But the results produced by the strategy are they those that were intended? Now, so there are two questions to be addressed under strategic control. Now, strategy involves continuous monitoring and it needs continuous effort in ensuring that it is being implemented as, as originally thought out. The purpose of strategic control is to monitor and correct any problems associated with the strategy implementation. Once the the vision has been worked out, the strategic vision has been worked out, then it's important that the business moves towards that vision. It moves from where it is now to where it is or where it wants to be in the future, in perhaps three or ten years time. But in order to do that it needs monitoring because the strategy can move off. It can move off the line it can it can deviate so it's important to be held uh, in a straight line if you like from A to B Minsberg discussed intended or planned strategies first of all intended strategies that are implemented are called deliberate strategies so if it's intended and it's implemented, that's deliberate. There was no way it was accidental or it just a bit of serendipity. It just, just happened. This was deliberate. If it's intended and it's implemented, that's a deliberate strategy. Now, intended strategies that are not implemented are called unrealized strategies. They're intended, but they weren't implemented, so they were not realized. And realized strategies that were unintended are called emergent strategies. Emergent strategies, they are, they are coming into place. They are perhaps will be looked at later because they are realized. It's what happened. It's where the, the business finds itself. But they were not intended. And so the business needs to look at is that where it wants to be and what changes can be made, or is it happy with where it is? Now you can see um, a three-step model of strategic control in, in play. The strategic management process consists of three processes. Well, first of all, strategy formulation. Design the strategy. The business knows where it is now. Where does it want to be? Then if it knows where it wants to be and the time scale, then implement the strategy. Move to the second process, strategy implementation. And having implemented the strategy, look to see if if that is correct. It's if does it yield the outcomes that were envisaged? Or did the strategy deviate at any time? in moving from A to B, moving from where it is now to where it wants to be. Did it deviate? So evaluate the strategy and control it. Uh, Schirog and Steinman introduced the classical feedback model of control, um, a, a three-step model of strategic control. First of all, they have what's called premise control. Uh, 
we'll, we'll talk about um, premise control in a second. So we have premise control, then we have implementation control, and then strategic surveillance. Now, the model was extended by Pearson Robinson uh, to include special alert control. These were to uh, <coughs> include very low probability events, but ones which could have a, a high impact on the strategy, ones which could knock the strategy off, but very unlikely to happen, but nonetheless special alert controls. So we have a, a three-step model of control here. One, we have premise control, which I'll explain in a second. Then we have implementation control and strategic surveillance. Now, let's move to it. Premise control is used to thoroughly and regularly monitor whether the premises, and a premise here means the assumptions, whether the assumptions considered during the planning and implementation stages are still valid. So premise control goes back to look at the assumptions, the assumptions that were made. So if they're planning to move the business from now into a, let's say, a 10-year period, what assumptions are they they're working towards in 10 years' time? What are they assuming about taxation in 10 years' time? Or inflation over that period or what will the the products be like? What will the market be like in 10 years time? What will the customers be like? What will customer income be like? What are the, the premises? A premise is an assumption in this case. So look critically at the assumptions. Look critically at the premises. If you go back to the previous slide, we now know what premise control is. Premise control is the assumption, the assumptions of the, the model, the assumptions on which the whole process is set out. Now, two f types of factors that need to be considered with premise control. First of all, environmental factors, and secondly, industry factors. Well, with the environmental factors, I've already mentioned some of these. For example, inflation, technology, interest rates, regulation, uh, demographic and social changes, and, and so on. There are, you can extend this list. But it's very difficult for businesses to make assumptions about the future. The future is so uncertain. Uh, we're not sure what the rate of inflation will be in 10 years' time or what the technology is. The technology is increasing at a never increasing rate. At a never increasing rate in, in such that it's almost impossible to predict technology. So these are environmental factors that make the premise part of the three-step model very difficult. And the industry factors, well, what competitors are there and the suppliers and the substitute goods and the barriers to entry. I mean, these are also difficult. It's not just a question of looking right now at who the competitors are, but who are the likely competitors in 10 years' time? New companies may come into the business. There may be more international competition and more uh, competitors as a consequence of the globalization process. So, that's the premise control. The second part of the three-step model was implementation control. Well, the implementation, implementation control stage checks to see whether the strategy should be changed in the light of the current business climate. So, it's a question, first of all, of to monitor strategic effectiveness. Decide during the planning stage on the areas of the business to be developed and decide on the strategies to facilitate that development. So it's the implementation is to really monitor strategic effectiveness. Decide at the planning stages, 
the areas of the business that are to be developed. Is it the whole business or is it just some sections of the business, some products perhaps within the business, allowing other products to die off eventually or to um, to run their course in, or even be sold off to, to competitors. Um, so decide on the areas of the business to be developed and then look at what strategies can be developed to enable that development to take place. What strategies are required? Now it's a big task, it's a big issue and it's, a, it's really complicated because of what I've already said the future is unpredictable to a large extent. However, in the implementation control we could also have milestone reviews. Decide when the strategy should be assessed and the criteria by which it will be measured. So a milestone could be, let's say we're talking about a 10 year uh, plan where the strategy is to run over say, let's say 10 years. Well there may be a milestone review in a year's time, another one in two years time and in three years time and so on to see how far the business has moved towards where it wants to be. So um, each milestone may have its criteria by which it's gauged. So it may be that the plan sits out that in a year's time the following could have happened. In, in two years time that should have happened. In three years time something else should have happened. And having specified what is practical and what can be done in a year or in two years then criteria is, is established. At the end of the year when the meeting takes place the management can say well we haven't hit the target that we set or we have hit the target that is set. These are the milestone reviews. The last part of the three-step model was strategic surveillance. Now strategic surveillance is used to monitor any event that may, be, that may threaten or uh, affect the company's strategy. So the strategic surveillance is used to monitor any event that may affect the company strategy. It's looking at events that, that may knock the business off direction. Strategic surveillance involves researching and monitoring all of the relevant information sources such as the internal and external environments of the business. So strategic surveillance is used to try and ensure that the business is on course and it's not being threatened by something which could severely knock it off course and perhaps even taking, um, taking preventive measures uh, to stop anything adverse that can be picked up during the strategic during the strategic surveillance. So it's used to protect the company, um, protect the, the strategy and it's used on a regular basis. I said that there was uh, one other added to it, um, so the three step could be considered as a four step model. The last one, as I said, was special alert control. Uh, this is used in the case of a sudden unexpected change of events that may require a change, change to the chosen strategy. Uh, this could be for a variety of reasons, um, natural reasons perhaps, uh, adverse climate or uh, earthquake or tsunami or war or uh, civil disturbance or um, lots of lots of things, events in the future could happen which may knock the business off its uh, strategic direction. Now a feedback model. Well first of all decide what to control. I mean, that's essential. If there's no idea of what to control then it can't be controlled. So what is to be controlled? And then determine the control standards. 
the targets and the tolerances. What's acceptable and what's not acceptable? If the business is aiming to be in a certain position in a year's time or in three years' time, uh, that's the, the target. Um, what in three years' time if it hasn't quite hit the target? At what point would you say it's acceptable? It's almost there. It's sufficient. It's not 100%, but it's sufficient. It's good. At what point? So, tolerances. It's not just a question of hitting the target completely. It may be a question of hitting the area, not being 100% on target, but almost there. So, monitor and evaluate. And contrast the performance to the standards performance. So, it's a question of monitoring, evaluating, and comparing it to the targets and the tolerances to see if it's acceptable or not. And if there are differences, consider why are there differences? If the company has moved from A to B from now into some future time and it hasn't achieved what it set out to achieve, um, why? It may be that the targets were unrealistic or have turned out to be unrealistic. Events in the environment have changed, which have changed the targets, changed the feasibility of the targets. The targets should have been revised because the environment had changed over a period of time. Perhaps that's the reason, but it's necessary to consider the reasons as to why there are differences. And it's always advisable to take immediate action to correct the differences, to try and um, put the company back on track, back to where it was intended, and to do a review of whether the company's position is near enough the, the target, or does it have to be precisely on. So it's a question of monitoring, even at the completion stage, monitoring the target and monitoring where the company is, looking at differences, and deciding on whether corrective action, remedial action, is required to put the company exactly on target. Now, that completes our talk on goals, objectives and control in terms of strategy. So I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.